Hi everyone, it's Jeff from Avada here. In this video, we're looking at how to design a website header with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. Headers are an integral part of a website, and with Avada we make it easy for you to create exactly the header you want. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a header completely from scratch, using Avada Layouts and the Avada Builder. I've imported the Landscaper pre-built site here, and as you can see, it has a nice header already. And if I go to Avada Layouts, we can see that the Header Layout section is assigned to the global layout. For this video, I will make a new one and then assign it here to replace this one. So what I will need to create is a new Header Layout section. So I will head to the Layout Section Builder. To get a good overview on layouts and layout sections, please review the layouts documentation. I'll select what type of layout section I want, in this case a header, and I'll give it a name, let's say Global Header, and I'll click on Create New Layout Section. So now I've created my layout section, and it has opened in Avada Live according to my preferences in the Builder options. At this point it is still empty, and neither is it assigned to a layout. It's useful to note that if I assigned it to the global layout now, on a live site, there wouldn't be a header displayed at all, as my layout section is still empty. So I'm going to build it first before assigning it. Now the easiest way to build a header quickly is just to go to Avada Studio here, and choose from one of the dozens of headers you can import. Then it's just a case of customising the header for your site. And if you use the Avada Setup Wizard to make a site, choosing a header is also part of that process. Both the Avada Studio and the Avada Setup Wizard are two features I'd highly recommend you get familiar with. But in this case, I'm going to simply add a container and build a new header from scratch. I'll need two containers for my header design, so I'll start with the top one. I'll add one with two one half columns and start by editing the container. I'll keep this on site width for the interior content and I'll leave the height on auto, but I will change the column alignment in this container to center which is the alignment of the columns within the row. I'm also going to give this container a background colour, so I'll head to the background tab and set this to colour 5. I think that's all I need to adjust on this container, so let's head to the first column and add an element. I'll start with a text block element here, and I'll add my text. I'll head to the design tab now, and change the colour to colour 1 so we can see it better. And now I will set the top margin to 0 pixels, and apply the global typography set called small. And I'll just reduce the line height back to 1. OK, in my other column I want a social links element. For this example I'll just accept the defaults with their dummy links. OK, let's head to the design tab. For this element I want to set the alignment to the right, and as this is right at the top I will change the tooltip position to be on the bottom. I'm happy with their size, and the fact they are not boxed, but I will change the icon colour to colour 1 as well. And I'll just set the icon hover colour to be colour 4. OK, that's looking pretty good. I think I want this container to be a little bigger though, so I will go to the container and to the design tab and just add 5 pixels top and bottom padding. Yeah, that's perfect. OK, now let's build our second container, which will hold our logo and menu. This time I'll add a 1 quarter, 3 quarter column combo and edit the container. Again I'll leave the interior content on site width and the height on auto. And again I'll change the column alignment to center. For this container I'll also head to the extras tab and turn the position sticky to on. So when I scroll the top container will scroll with the content, but this one will stick at the top. I might also turn sticky off for small screens. And I'm going to give the sticky container a background color as well, let's say color 2, to help it stand out from any white backgrounds behind it. OK, that should be good for our container, but we can always come back and tweak it if we need to. In the one quarter column, I'm going to add my logo via the image element. I'll select my logo, and here I'm going to add the one that's 646 pixels wide. It's constrained by the one quarter column, but I'm also going to go to the design tab and set an image max width of 323 pixels, half the original size for retina crispness. I also want the logo to be smaller when the header is sticky. So I will use the Image Sticky Max Width option here to shrink the logo to 200 pixels when the container is sticky. And because this will be the website logo, I want to set a link on this image back to the home page as is standard. So I'll come back to the General tab and add some dynamic content. 
I'll select site URL and I'll leave the link target on self. You can also do some cool things with this element sticky visibility option here like make this logo disappear when on sticky or the other way around. But in this case I will leave this on default. Now by default the columns have no top or bottom margin on this site. So here I will add some container padding. So back on the container under the design tab I will add 20 pixels top padding. I actually want the second column to be along the bottom of the container as it is now so I won't add any bottom padding. So I'll actually come back to the image element and on the design tab I'll add 20 pixels bottom margin here to bring that logo back into the middle. I don't think that will cause any issues but it might need some tweaking. Okay now for the second column. Here I want to add the menu element. It loads a menu but this is the footer menu so I will just choose the landscaper main menu. Okay now we have our correct menu let's customize it. I don't think we need anything further on this tab so let's move to the main tab. The first option is minimum height. And with this option we can set a minimum height for the menu element itself. This will affect the height of the menu obviously, but it will also affect background colors and links. So for my example I'm going to set this to 80 pixels, and we will see why as we go. For the sticky minimum height I'll reduce that to 65 pixels. Align items is set to stretch, which I want, but the justification is set to flex start and instead I want to set it to flex end. And in the main menu typography, I'm going to set this to the lead set. Then comes the main menu item padding option. This can be useful if applying borders or hover effects, as it affects each menu item, whereas the option below this, the main menu item spacing, affects the space between the items. So for this example, I'm going to set 10 pixels main menu item padding top and bottom, and 20 pixels padding left and right. And I'm going to then space the main menu items out by 15 pixels. Okay, that's starting to look better. For the main menu item border radius, I'm going to have a background color on hover for this menu, so I'm going to set this to 10 pixels on the top left and top right, but leave the bottom right and left empty, as the menu will be sitting along the bottom of the column. And I think I will choose bottom for the main menu hover transition. Now a bit further down we have the main menu item background color. Here I want to go to the hover slash active state, and change the background color to color 5, and the text color to color 1. Now we can see the hover transition I have set up, and how it goes right to the bottom of the container. Cool. Okay, let's move to the submenu tab. I'm pretty happy with the defaults here, and the menu itself is providing the icons. I might just change the submenu expand transition to slide down. Yeah, I like that. I might also add a bit of bottom border radius to the submenus to match the main menu. I'll just make it a bit smaller at 8 pixels bottom right and bottom left. And finally on this tab I think I'll change the submenu background color to the hover slash active state and set the background color to color 5 and the text color to color 1, like the main menu. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, our menu is basically done. At least for large screens. We just have to check the responsive design. So I'll go to the mobile tab. The collapse to mobile breakpoint is set to medium screens and I think that will work fine. So as this tab is to do with the menu when it's in mobile mode, I'll just switch to medium screens from the responsive options in the toolbar for this section. Okay, the menu now loads as a mobile menu, but I can see the full width column defaults have kicked in. I'll sort that in a minute, but let's finish the menu first. I might start by changing the background color to color 5 here and the text to color 1. I'm happy with the icons, but I want this a bit bigger, so I'll change the mobile menu trigger font size to 24 pixels. For the mobile menu trigger horizontal align, I want flex end. The mobile menu trigger bottom margin option allows us to set a bottom margin to our mobile menu, and for this option I will set it to 20 pixels. This pushes the submenus down a little. Finally I'll come to the bottom, and set the mobile menu background color to color 2, and on the active state, I'll set the background color to color 5, and the text color to color 1. Okay, that was epic. That's going to be a really nice menu. Finally, what we need to do now is sort our column sizes. By default, columns inherit from the large screen layout on medium screens, and go full width on small screens. If I just head to the global options, Avada Builder Elements, Columns, we can see that in this pre-build, however, the designer has chosen columns to also go full width on medium screens. And this will apply to our columns in the header as well. 
I won't change the global option here as that would affect the whole design of the site. But I want my header to be different, so this is where responsive option sets come in. So I'll go to the navigator and edit the columns. On the design tab, I will set them to what I want for the various screen sizes. For medium screen, I want them all to be one half size columns. So I'll just do that. And now I can see the menu column is sitting low as it doesn't have any bottom margin. That was good in the desktop view, but not here. So I'll add 20 pixels bottom margin. Yeah, that looks much better. If I now move to the small screen layout, we can again see our columns have gone full width according to the global options. For small screens, I also want all columns to be one half, like the medium layout. So I will again adjust them here. OK, that's about it. I'll just come back to the large screen layout, and here is our menu and our completed header. I'll just go into preview mode, and we can have a good look at it. Let's start by scrolling, and we can see our first container scroll up, while our second container becomes sticky, gets a background colour, and the logo reduces in size. I'll just scroll back, and here's our really nice menu, with hover transitions and nice drop downs. Yeah, that looks awesome. If we head to the medium screen layout, we can see our menu has changed to the mobile menu, and if I drill down into the menu, it all looks very good. Finally, if I head to the small screen layout, again it looks good, but here if I scroll the container is not sticky. Alright, that's my new custom header built from scratch. There are a lot of options when designing header layout sections, but with Avada layouts you have the full power of the Avada builder to create anything you want. If you don't want to build one from scratch, Remember you can also import any of the many headers in Avada Studio as a starting point. But with this video, I wanted to show you how easy and powerful it is to create your own. All I need to do now is head to Avada Layouts and disconnect the existing header. And then assign this layout section to the header section of the global layout. Then it will be used across the site. If we come back to our home page and refresh, there it is. OK, this concludes our video on how to design a website header with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.